And we're delighted to be joined this afternoon by writer, director, producer, Tamara simon Hoffs. Thank you for joining us, Tamar. Hello, Sean. Hi, Tammy. How are you? Welcome once again to uh, a special interview with Tamar Hoffs. Tammy, who is Tamar Hoffs? And what, uh, what made you want to create film? Well, I've had a very interesting series of geographical changes in my life from the time that I was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, a very famous steel town up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And I uh, grew up riding an inclined plane down to the little city of Johnstown, which was quite famous for having major floods all the time. And then my parents moved to New York, had a second part of my childhood there, and then I really grew up in the city of Chicago which is a challenge for almost anyone, the weather being so horrific mm -hmm. almost uh, for six or seven months of winter that Ireland would seem like paradise. All right. Paired, absolutely balmy. Yes. Uh, then uh, when I was a college girl, I went off to Yale mm -hmm. to study art, which had been my love throughout my childhood. My parents were both intellectuals. They uh, were very uh, strong on a good education for women as well as men, and therefore I was urged to go to the best school I could find. Mm -hmm. Little did they know that what I would find would be a husband. All right. A very great moment in my life. I met a very smart medical student, mm -hmm. and Joshua Hoffs mm -hmm. is my husband of almost half a century now, so Congratulations. it was a very, very good idea to go to Yale. Uh, but I also uh, developed a great passion for painting, and I thought I would become a serious uh, Eastern Seaboard artist when my husband's medical career uh, took us to Los Angeles, where he uh, became a uh, teacher at UCLA Medical School. All right. So off we went to Los Angeles and suddenly I was surrounded by new images. Mm. And I don't have to tell you what they are because it's obvious from what I'm doing now that I got bitten by the movie bug. Right. And I believe that that was a very natural transition for anybody who was into Art. The visual arts. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was because you were out in Hollywood that, uh, you know, obviously because of the um, uh, predominance of film in the area, or was it something you thought of that you had thought about when you were uh, younger? I loved, I loved the neorealists of Italy and the new wave of, mm. of the British movies, uh, John Schlesinger's movies, uh, the early Malcolm McDowell movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just tremendously interested, but I always assumed everybody was, mm -hmm. because they were so powerful and they taught me so much about life. Honestly, I, I learned a lot about life in the movies, because I had married uh, my college sweetheart, basically, right. and really hadn't, although I must say I thought I had lived a lot, I really hadn't. Uh, so I think probably the movies would have been uh, appealing to me in my art, but what happened was quite funny mm -hmm. and coincidental in that I had children right away, mm -hmm. and while I was picking up my oldest son in preschool, mm -hmm. there was a very interesting man also picking up his son, mm -hmm. and I, he was interesting because he looked familiar to me, and in fact he was familiar because he was an actor named Leonard Nimoy. All right. And it, there was a very odd thing in, in Los Angeles. Gu guys picked up their kids, not just women, because out-of-work actors would become Mr. Mom. Right, right. So, so Leonard Nimoy was Mr. Mom for the day. Huh? Right. So there we were, standing in the parking lot, and he mentioned that he was doing a film about um, a convict. Mm -hmm who had a very big tattoo on his chest. In our chat, I mentioned that I was an artist. Mm -hmm. He said, let me see your work. I showed him my work, and he said, 
gee, you should be in our art department because we need somebody who is a painter like yourself mm -hmm. to paint this tattoo on my chest. I have major allergies. They, if the tattoo has to be redone every day or I break out. <laughs> so, nice. Little did I know that I was going to be initiated into the film <laughs> world by a, a disrobed Leonard Nimoy providing me with his chest to paint on. That was, a, it was really, an interesting start. No? It was a great start. Well, now, your family is steeped in music making, filmmaking, animation, and storytelling. Do you personally honor any individuals in particular for this legacy? Well, I owe so many people that we would be here for two or three days if I tried to run through all of them. But I, I will tell you, my very great original influences were my mom and dad. Uh -huh. My dad loved opera. He was a regular at the opera, going to opera, but also listening every Saturday afternoon. One of my great weekly events was sitting on my dad's lap, basically listening to the Metropolitan Opera Hour nice. or two that they had every Saturday. And I don't believe it, it's on anymore like that, but they would have a quiz and he would always get them all right. And that was a great influence for me for music. Um, and my mom was an artist. So, of course, she influenced me very, very much in, in the arts, mm -hmm. but she also knew poetry, she knew literature. She was a school teacher as well as an artist, so she always had wonderful books to read around the house, and my dad as well. It was, it was a wonderful childhood filled with in intellectual pursuits as well as just down home singing and having fun. Mm -hmm. My dad loved Spanish dancing. That oh, was nice. a, just a, a great aspect mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the art form that I adored. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, when I was in high school, I used to usher at the Opera House in Chicago, a great, beautiful Opera House where they had all the ballet companies. And I would be an usher, and the minute the lights would go down, I would wait and I would find an empty seat and sit there and dream that I was actually a part of the audience watching these incredible dancers. If there was no, no seat, I would sit on the steps mm -hmm. and I would sit in the shadows and watch and dream about these images, which of course become part of any filmmaker's, uh, you know, wonderful sort of imagistic brain. Right. It's, just, it's just embedded in your brain. So, so this is where this all began for me in a general way. But I had a brother who was a fantastic rock and roll guitar player. Mm -hmm. And he was in Linda Ronstadt's band, which was for me a, a, a very exciting, different kind of music. Mm -hmm. And he not only was an influence for me, but my daughter Susanna, who mm -hmm. then founded the Bangles with the Peterson sisters and went on to you know great acclaim there. Mm -hmm. But my brother Carmi, the rock and roll musician, was both her influence and my influence in becoming aware of the pop music uh, origins and rock and roll because that was a new part of my music interest. Mm -hmm. And he was a complete 60s rebel. So all of the influences that I think really were part of our culture in the, the 60s and 70s came also from my brother. And uh, it was a great childhood. Very cultural. Very cultural, you might say. A little too cultural, <laughs> but good. Now, writing and animation have played a significant role in forging your links with Ireland, Tammy. How did that all begin? Yes, indeed, uh, animation did play a role in my making connections with several companies in Ireland that became uh, uh, involved with me, actually, as partners. One is Abu Media in Galway, and another is Telegale, also in Galway area. Uh, at Abu, it's Pierce Boyce, and at the uh, Telegale uh, studio, it's um, Paul Cummins.